So we'll start the thing um, Q&A off with Joel Polis and Thomas Waits. So sorry that uh, Keith and David and uh, uh, Richard uh, couldn't make it, and TK missed a, a plane in Los Angeles. So, unfortunately, but happily for Tom and I, we're the deal today. So. <laughs> and today's my birthday, so I oh, happy birthday. Give me the love. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so there's actually a very few places I'd rather be than here with you guys. Uh, the other thing I want to say is usually when there are three or four or five of us up on the podium, I hear stories that I've never heard before. And even the incidents that I'm convinced that I know the truth of, it has a completely different view from every single one of us who were there uh, when we were filming the show. So my disclaimer is you're going to hear my story today when you ask questions and, uh, and Tom will tell his view of events. That's, that's all I wanted to say. How was, uh, how was Monster Mania treat you guys? How Great. Monster Mania. Mania. I mean, Terrific. first class all around. Couldn't be better. Very grateful. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay, guys. Um, you know the drill. If you guys have a question, please raise your hand, and we will get started. And don't be shy. Yes. yes. Um, when you were filming the thing, um, I, there's a, I was a little bit of confusion. Where exactly were you filming the most movie? Uh, we, we, we stayed in North America. Uh, we shot about 18 weeks in Los Angeles in a soundstage on Universal Lot. And then we spent two weeks in Hyder, Alaska. See, now I saw those three weeks in Hyder, Alaska. It so might have been three. Yeah. Uh, we were drinking a lot back there. So he was drinking a lot back They had this drink that you would light on fire. What was it called? Uh, Fuzzy Buster. Fuzzy and movie. it was this alcohol that was 150 <laughs> proof. And they insisted that your initiation was you drink one of these things. Let me tell you, you were rocked. It could have been a month that you were there. <laughs> thought we were going to give a couple of minutes before we got into that. <laughs> Get right cut to the bone. The, the sound stage that you were on, though, was what they call, I believe, a frozen sound stage, where it's very they, cold. They lowered the temperature on the sound stage to about 45 degrees. Uh, and so it was, uh, it was pleasantly chill in there. And it was 115 outside the door in the San Fernando Valley where Universal is. I don't know if you've been there, but... Uh, and then we went up to uh, Stewart, British Columbia and Ida where we shot the exteriors. And we got there mid-November and it wasn't that cold, although this was the snow capital of North America. Uh, but the last few days, the temperature fell precipitously and it got really cold. And we had one night out on the glacier when we were filming very late and it went down to minus 30. So it was, it was really <laughs> very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who has another question? Yes. Uh, when you got the call uh, to get signed on for this film, had either of you, uh, were you aware of the original film? Did you know about the story? Well, I was born in 1951 when the original movie was uh, filmed. And I think I saw it for the first time when I was about seven years old. And it was that Howard Hawks deal. It did, the movie didn't start till like halfway through. But when he was throwing the dogs around outside and they were shrieking in that snowstorm, I was terrified. So when this came up and I thought, oh my God, I, I could get to do the thing, you know? Uh, it was really thrilling for me. I had no notion of the thing, but John screened it for us when we got there as part of our rehearsal process, and I'm glad he did, because it gave me a lot of ideas, 
you know. Um, a lot of times when you're creating a character, you get ideas from all sorts of places, magazine articles, people that you meet, you know, uh, a thought flashes through your mind that connects with another thought, and then you start to create somebody different than you. And um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. How was, um, we'll start with, with John Carpenter. How was working with him and, and his directing style and uh, the entire process with him? Well, I had uh, gone to USC uh, and I was in the theater school while John was in the film school. So I actually never met him. And I only did one student film while I was at USC. And it turns out that John saw it. So he kind of, when I first met him for the audition, he went, you, were you in the, and he mentioned the name of the movie, and I was like, what? I didn't think anybody in the world saw that thing, and he had seen me do it. Um, it was great working with him. He cast the movie, if you, look, if you look at the cast, they're terrific actors. All of them, except for Kurt at that point, weren't really well known, and many of them went on, like Keith and David Clinton and Charlie Hallahan, Rest of the Soul, and Dice Hart, and Brimley, they went on to have much bigger careers after this, and it turned out that uh, John really put together an amazing group of men for this, uh, for this movie. Um, he let us do our own work. Uh, unbeknownst to him, several of the actors were from Yale Drama School, several was, were, like Tom, was from Juilliard uh, Acting School. Uh, ACT uh, in San Francisco, and Donald Moffat was from the Royal Academy, and had, I'd seen him as a student on stage when I was when I was a student, and um, and uh, so he cast a theater cast of a cast of theater actors, and we all knew how to work that way as an ensemble, and we did two weeks of rehearsal before we started filming, just running the scenes with each other and everything, and. When that was over, John said, I'm never going to rehearse actors again. But uh, it turns out that this is one of his favorite films, and the, the work that we did in rehearsal shows up on the screen in terms of our relationships with each other. And I think the strength of the relationships with each other really adds to the power of the film. So it was, uh, it was tremendous working with John. He had. Uh, great confidence in us, and um, it was a lot of fun. For me, John was a riot, because like Joel said, we were classically trained actors, and he would be like, what are you guys doing, discussing your motivation? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was his approach. It's, he's like, you know, I'm not, that's not my thing. You know, you do it, and I film it, and I direct it, and you hold up your end. And I kind of appreciated that, but I'll tell you an amazing story. <laughs> uh, I pissed him off really big time. Uh, David Clennon and I had a scene <laughs> that we were shooting in the compound, and it was about a page and a half or two pages long. It was a good scene. It, it, it actually established why he and I didn't get along, right? And um, what happened, you know, when you do movies, they put a microphone on you, like right here, right? And uh, we shoot the scene once, and then he goes, fellas, I gotta cut the scene. And we're like, what? <laughs> you don't know actors, it's like, cut my scene. <laughs> I mean, that's like losing a limb, right? So David Klein and I go off and we're like, he's a guy, so that's the The mic's going. <laughs> And John comes around the corner and he goes, uh, fellas, I heard every word you said. <laughs> I was mortified. I mean, I had, I had made a big blunder. You know, eventually, being the man he is, I wrote him a note, said I was sorry. And he understood. He, he let it go. He, he's such a great guy. Now, my recollection was that Clennon went, this is bullshit! And suddenly John comes flying down the, the, you know, through into the hallway and says, I heard every word you said, and they got into this screaming match. So, you see what I mean? It's like Rashomon. It's like, no, there was, there was a little bit. You know. I, I was 
But it all, it all worked out. Yeah, it would all work out. It was fun. Be careful what you say when you have a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? Yes. Um, what was it like looking at the effects for the thing? Well, Rob Bottin designed these effects. He was 23 years old. He looked like a werewolf. He was a big six-foot kid with <laughs> hair that was halfway down to his ass, and he had a beard down to here. He was 23, and that imagination was off the charts. And John gave him, when, when he came into John with some design uh, papers of what he was planning on creating, John just took a look at it and said, run with it. So. A lot of the effects we, were, we saw in person, for instance, the dog, uh, when it begins to shake and then opens up. And it was astonishing to sit there and see what, he had, what they created in the, uh, you know, in the laboratory and in the workshops. Amazing. But a lot of the effects, um, depending on which character you were playing, you didn't really see until you, you saw the movie. And then it was a, a double surprise, you know. So, but I do know that I hear a lot from the fans that the prequel that was made later on, uh, which had a lot of CGI in it, it just doesn't come up to the, the, re the real, when the things are in front of you and they're happening, um, the reactions are different than when they're creating it on the green screen. For instance, uh, I went to school with Sigourney Weaver and when she did Alien, they had, uh, it was John Hurt down on the table when that thing comes up out, out of him. And they, they, they knew they were gonna see something, but they didn't know what. So when that thing burst up out of his chest, that was the first time they saw it. And you can see it on their faces when you see that scene, you know, whatever it is. So it really works in the favor of, of uh, the actors when, you, when the effects are live in front of you. Uh, anybody else? Uh, what was it like working with uh, Kurt Russell? <laughs> you know, Kurt's been in the business since he was five. So, to him, this is like a joke. I mean, he's basically done whatever he's wanted for a long time. When he told me that, you know, his dad was a character actor, Bing Russell. And, um, his dad was doing a TV show for Disney or something, or a movie for Disney, and they needed a guy to skateboard. So Kurt skateboarded through the shot, they did it a couple times, and they said, okay, that's it, and then he saw his paycheck, and he goes, I know what I'm doing the rest of my life. <laughs> and he did. You know, he's a formidable man, and also a very kind and generous man. He sat in on my acting class in Los Angeles when I was living there. He did an improv with one of my students. I mean, that shows you what kind of guy he is. Um, <clears throat> see, here's my story. Kurt told me that his first job was when he was nine years old, and he got to kick Elvis Presley in the ass <laughs> for a quarter. That was it. Elvis would pay him and say, "Kid, kick me when they're." see the girl in there. So they roll camera and Kurt with a big smile on his face said, I went over it and I kicked him as hard as I could and, and Elvis went, holy smokes, what are you doing, you know, and so uh, he's been doing it a long time. He's also to me one of the most underrated uh, uh, film actors in our pantheon. I mean, if you saw Miracle, he's, he's just you believe everything he does. And I remember we were on the set of the thing one night. It was 30 below. He had the most improbable speech I could imagine anybody saying out loud. And we were all in a circle around him and John said, and action. And Kurt launched into the speech. And I, I, I was thinking, yeah, yeah, yeah. And suddenly I, and they all cut. And I turned to a guy in the crew behind me and I went, oh my God, I, I believed every word he said. And he said, that's why he's a star. <laughs> he's a great actor. Awesome. Hey, I just received word that uh, Matthew Lillard will continue to sign in his line if you were here for that Q&A. It's next, I know I apologize, but I just received this update. So they're going to reschedule his Q&A for later on tonight. I do not have a time yet, but when I do, I will pass it along. Anyway, yes. Um, in this thing, is there a super bow skill? Is there a particular skill <coughs> that you 
to that was your favorite scene to film? And there is there a particular scene that was your least favorite scene to film? No. <laughs> <laughs> It was my first film. I loved every single moment of it. I was just in heaven. And if I could do two scenes over, <laughs> I, I, I would do them differently. What are they? Well, there's one scene where Kurt comes up on me, and I reach for a bottle of acid. I'm looking for a way to find out how to identify the thing. I just look at him and hold it. And then I relax when he doesn't attack me, and I say, we should do this and this and this. And had I had more experience, I think I would have loaded it up a little more emotionally, so that the stress of the situation might have brought me to have a real moment of, of release, you know? That was one. And then the other one, we were actually playing with the thing that Wilford, is, uh, that Blair is looking. We should have been in hazmat suits. You know, we were in butcher aprons, you know, we should have been in some kind of protective suits, but they didn't, that, that wasn't part of the production design, so. I guess for me, uh, it was a really personal, great moment for me, I'll try to demonstrate. I was standing there looking at the thing, and it made a move, and I go. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that was like. <laughs> I just thought that that's how to use your body in a movie. You know? <laughs> Very subtle, but really clear. And when I saw the movie, everyone burst out laughing. And that I was just perfect. Yeah, and I was really pleased with that. You know, I'm not a big special effect. You know, I'm an actor, and uh, you know, I don't really do these kind of movies. It's it's not my thing. You know, it's not where my strength lies. And uh, I didn't care for all the, you know, <laughs> you know and it, it's me, you know, not that it wasn't done well, it was done great, it's just, you know, everybody's got, you know, some people like classical music, some people like jazz, and, or, or mine, you know, just kidding, and uh, I think that there are always, you look back and you wish you could do things differently, you know, but there are no do-overs in life, so, you know, you have to appreciate what you were doing when you were doing it, I think. And, uh, and it was great fun. It was probably the best job I ever had. <laughs>